What was the most momentous occasion in over a century of Canadian soccer? Maybe it came in 1985 in St. John's, Newfoundland. Canada beat Honduras to qualify for the FIFA World Cup for the first and only time. However, some of the visiting fans missed it all. Canada is an easy country in which to get lost. The Hondurans that weren't at the, the, the venue but were in Canada because they, they went to St. John's, but they went to St. John, New Brunswick, and they ended up having to watch the game on TSN in a bar. So they weren't there, but there were some Honduran fans that actually made it to, to, to Newfoundland. And I can remember the guy on the PA system saying, Ladies and gentlemen, let's be very hospitable spectators. We have some, some fans from Honduras, and if you could just all move over a little bit, then we can let them in. And, I, and it's like, wow, you know, we're, we're just so accommodating. Can you imagine what would happen in Honduras if Canadian fans were there? Uh, and, and so everything about it was surreal. It climaxed a golden age, a time when as many as five Canadian franchises played in the star-studded North American Soccer League. But by 1985, it had folded, and professionals such as Bob Linaduzzi were earning their corn wherever they could. It wasn't the best preparation for the trip to Mexico. It was difficult for, for the squad to prepare because the, most of the guys were playing indoor soccer because that's what the opportunity was after the demise of the North American Soccer League. And then the rest of the players didn't have a team. And the irony is, when I watched the, the World Cup draw, I was in Tacoma playing indoor soccer. Good preparation for going to the World Cup. And then they arrived. I can remember vividly the bus ride to the first game against France. And the Mexicans love to do this thing where they line up along the streets, you've got your police escort to the stadium and they do this thing where they put their hands up and they indicate what the score is going to be. Normally it's like say this, or, but in, in, in this case, they had to use both hands for France. Like it was this, this is Canada zero. So we were kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be a, a real interesting game. I had a, a hand in, in the goal because the cross came from wide right and it hung up in the air for a long time and I, and I think the altitude may have made the, the flight of the ball just a little bit different and Paul Dolan was coming for it and I was right behind him and I stopped because I thought he was going to get it and had I known he wasn't going to get it I would have actually headed it for a corner just to be safe but someone got around the back of me and headed it back in and then Papan had the easy task of a tap in. I think we then went in our heads from being happy to be at the World Cup, kind of thinking, hey, we just, we just lost one nothing to a late goal to France, who are being tipped as one of the favorites to win the World Cup, and we just watched Russia destroy Hungary. We play Hungary next. <laughs> this is good. You know, now we go from being massive underdogs to, and, and our, unfortunately, I think we started to believe that Okay, we just have to turn up now and this is going to, there's going to be some points there for us and that was the biggest mistake that we, we, we could have made. Prior to the World Cup there were odds on Canada scoring goal at the World Cup and, and a lot of people were, were going to make a lot of money if in fact we did score a goal <laughs> uh, and yours truly <laughs> had an unbelievable opportunity <laughs> to have my name in the record books corner, ball got swung over, bounced off a couple of people and bounced right in front of me in the six yard box, nobody near me. And I panicked. I thought, oh, I gotta get the shot off quick. Swung at it, stubbed my toe, hit the ball, but not, not hard enough. And their keeper did me a big favor because he actually dived for it and he didn't have to dive for it. And it made it look a little bit better, but I was feeling so devastated because First of all, I would have liked to have scored a goal at the World Cup. But secondly, a lot of people weren't happy with me because I cost them some money. So Canada left Mexico after defeats to France, Hungary and the Soviet Union with no goals in the plus column. Their efforts did lead to the establishment of a Canadian soccer league, but it soon fizzled out. However, 
Times have changed and MLS includes three enthusiastic Canadian franchises these days. Nenaduzzi is president of the revived Vancouver Whitecaps. What does he think was the legacy of the Mexican adventure of 1986? In terms of the, the significant impact that qualifying for our first World Cup should have had, it, it, we don't really have that. And all these years later, we haven't qualified for another World Cup, which when you looked at Canada and the United States at that point, most people would have said the better players were in Canada. But then the Americans in 1990 qualified, 94 host the World Cup, the legacy of hosting the World Cup was the MLS. And since then, the two countries have just gone in opposite directions. Um, so, unfortunately, no significant legacy from qualifying in 86.